Good morning and welcome to Utah Matters. I'm Dean Painter of KJAZZ Television and Larry H. Miller Communications. Now, this past September, a massive earthquake rumbled across the floor of the South Pacific and churned up a tsunami that smashed into dozens of tropical islands, including Samoa and Tonga. Entire villages and resorts were instantly swept away by the gush of ocean. Nearly 200 islanders were killed and thousands left homeless without jobs and schools. The disaster was particularly painful for the women's volleyball coach at Utah Valley University, Sam Matoa. He suffered a personal loss and was drawn back to Samoa in February to see what had become of the place where he grew up. That trip touched off an effort that culminated in a most unusual experience that only college kids in Utah might appreciate. Today on Utah Matters, we welcome UVU women's volleyball head coach, Sam Matoa, and a couple of his star players. Uh, also with, with what's right now, we have Elise Jones, who's a uh, the Bolero on the uh, team, is that correct? Yeah, Bolero. Very good. Good to have you with us. Uh, as I say, a most unusual experience for a volleyball team at Utah Valley University. Uh, so let's start with that. Uh, Coach Atoa, uh, you went back in February to see what was left of uh, those beaches uh, in Samoa where you grew up. Give us, tell us what you saw and how you were personally connected with it. Well, it was quite a humble, uh, humbling situation for us to be able to kind of take that drive and uh, to actually, um, you know, see what took place. You know, um, there are several uh, villages that still have not been, uh, they're not rebuilding because they're very afraid of something happening again. And so since the, the last earthquake, there's been a few other tsunami warnings and which just continues to trigger, you know, the fear of what happened that day. And so um, families and villagers are just, Going back or going inland uh, to build instead of on the coast, which is a, which is unfortunate because it's just that's where they have always grown up and that's where they always lived is on the coast. When was the last time something like this had happened? I don't recall that it ever happened. Mm. Uh, nothing to this magnitude at all. Uh, it may have very early, but uh, this was definitely the probably the biggest devastation that they've ever. They they usually um, experience hurricanes or cyclones. But a tsunami like this uh, caught them completely off guard, and the damage and uh, the life's loss was just unbearable. So, and you had a very personal connection to. I did. Tsunami. I did. Uh, relatives of our family, um, my uncle, um, his wife, uh, she passed away. She got caught up in the tsunami, and then also her mother, um, from the effects of the tsunami, died the next day. And so it was very unfortunate. We were able to meet with Uncle Joe while we were there. And uh, we were also kind of, when we were in the village that he was, is from, uh, there were some that kind of told us a little bit about the story and where she was when, when they got caught in that. And so it was just, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, we were very devastated about the whole news, but then having yeah. to, to, to see that uh, in person. Now, Elise, so Coach goes to, uh, he goes to Samoa, he comes back. Uh, he has a plan, or how does all that all come about where you, uh, you're playing volleyball one month and you're in Samoa in the next, actually New Zealand as well. How did this all come about? Um, well, we started talking about it because he goes on this trip every four years. And when he asked us if we wanted to go, we all were all for it. All our teammates, it was probably, what, we knew it was going to be the neatest experience of our lives. And, uh, and we had to do a lot of fundraising and so when he came back, he uh, told us the devastation of the tsunami and what we needed to collect to help the people of Samoa. And um, we got a 50 foot, 45 foot 40. container. <laughs> yeah, 40 foot container. container, huge container. And we had to collect a lot of things to help the people of Samoa. Um, Where did you get it? Where, what was coming into the container? Where did you get that? from many people across the state, just sending things in, different people with Eagle projects, um, youth elementary schools, um, many other just people that we talked to as players that we needed to get stuff from, a lot of stuff donated. I understand and you started with a 20 foot, you thought a 20 foot container, you yeah. needed to double that space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Globus International was involved, Globus uh, a local uh, charity. Absolutely. I mean, we kind of got to a point where when we, we decided to expand to go to a 40, we knew that we had more than a 20-foot 20, uh, 20 container 
um, but we still needed some help with things. And through some connections and people that talked, we were able to get connected with Globus Relief. And they were unbelievable. Um, and they filled the rest of our container with medical supplies and hygiene kits and stuff that we were very helpful to the people um, at the hospitals that we visited, as well as the, the elderly care center that we visited while we were there. We're going to show you, uh, we're going to cut to a, a package, a report that was done by TV3 in Samoa about your visit there. Y'all made the news, mm -hmm. right? Uh, let's, let's watch that right now. A friendly volleyball game is happening this evening between our volleyball team and visiting university students from Utah. Upon arrival, however, days ago, they came pairing gifts for the elderly at Mapufangalele, who welcomed the team who has made it their mission to give something back to the community through Mapufangalele as they have done in the past. Great privilege for us to be able to come and represent um, Utah Valley University as well as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as we are all members of the church, and opportunities to be able to somewhat make a little bit of a difference, you know, with teddy bears and hygiene kits and a few other things that we took to Mapuifangalele earlier today, where we were able to uh, take uh, uh, walkers and wheelchairs and and canes and other things that will help make a difference to the elderly as well. And the boys from the land of opportunity did not live empty-handed with the sisters and the elderly offering their blessings for a safe return, but moreover a good time while they on island. The team's next stop was the little ones at the pediatrics ward at the Motokutua Hospital. Volleyball that brings us here for us to be able to come and compete and play but it's these experiences that help us be, get, be able to kind of learn and grow and to learn about, uh, uh, about the culture, about the Samoan people. That is the main reason why I want to be able to share with each of these girls is more of... After they came tonight at the Falanta complex around 7 p.m., they plan to visit the tsunami-affected areas at Alebata and give what they can before departing Samoa next Monday. You want to buy TV3 News. At least as your coach said, he wanted this to be a benefit to you as well as to the people you were helping. What was the mm -hmm. best moment for you? Um, best moment for me probably was just all together when we were delivering stuff to, to the tsunami victims with the container. Because you just see the light in their eyes and how excited they were that someone else cared for them. And the Samoan people are so loving and so appreciative and just little acts of service for them they were thrilled and seeing that, um, that smile on their face and knowing that someone else was doing all they could for them yeah. was just inspiring and it, it's changed our lives because it makes us really think of how blessed we are and as people here we have so many things and these people have nothing and just getting one item was the best moment of their lives. Yeah, good stuff. We're with uh, Utah Valley University head women's volleyball coach Sam Mateau and some of his players. We'll be right back to meet a new one and talk more about the Tsunami Relief Project on Utah Matters. To Utah Matters, uh, we're with the, the Utah Valley University women's volleyball team. Great team, by the way. Uh, you folks uh, smoked the Utes this last uh, year, didn't you? <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that. We've got youth fans in the control room. We played well, yeah. for sure. We played well that, that evening, and it was a, a great start for our season to be able to have that as our home, home opener and to be able to have several fans there, and uh, which really helped contribute. But, yeah. you know, it uh, started off a very good season for us, and so we were very fortunate to be able to kind of uh, do some things that uh, helped us become victorious against the youths. But, uh, well, one of your very good players is Chelsea Garfield here. She's from Morgan. Chelsea, what year are you? I'm going to be a junior. Wow, so more to, more to come from you. Yes. Excellent. Two more years. And, uh, of course, your team, all of them, uh, made the trip to New Zealand and Samoa to help with this tsunami relief effort. Where did you get the money to do this? I assume that uh, oh, the university didn't, didn't write a check for you. <laughs> no. No, we, we earned all our money, and it, it definitely took a lot of hard work. We did a lot of uh, catering for the university, for parties and stuff, did a lot of serving to people. Um, we did some volleyball camps for the youth to try and raise money, but we had a lot of people that helped donate, and that was just a huge, huge help for us because there's no way we could have done it by ourselves. So. Uh, I would imagine. We're going to look at some tape now on part of your trip here. This is when you, uh, I guess, opened the container and got to a, uh, uh, one of the schools. So we're going to roll that now and have you talk about it. Um, 
This is, uh, this is the container, 40-foot container. And Sam, you had a little trouble getting clearance on the container, didn't you? We did. We were hoping to be able to get it cleared um, on Tuesday uh, when we arrived Tuesday night, but it unfortunately was not. And so I had to spend some time Wednesday uh, with the authorities and trying to get it cleared. And so yeah. we... Chelsea, what have we got here? We're at the AMU Academy in Samoa, and these kids just put on this amazing program for us. They were so appreciative of everything that we brought, and they really loved us. It was an amazing experience. They gave us all their lays. They wanted us to dance with them, to play with them, and just hugs. They just wanted to hug us, and it was really one of the greatest experiences I've ever been able to have in my life. Yeah. Oh, this is great. And uh, how many, roughly how many students do we have at this school? I would say there was probably around 200 students there, yeah. and they all just, just swarmed to us, basically. <clears throat> uh, what did you bring in this case? What were in the boxes? We had books. We had school supplies as far as pencils, pens, papers, notebooks. Just anything that you know normally we would take for granted as a school, but for them, they're just getting started. The school has only been open for three years. About three years. So they are just still getting started. They still just need supplies just to help them out with whatever they need. How many of the schools on the island were damaged by the uh, by the tsunami? Did you I'm have not sure exactly how many uh, there were. Um, several were affected that were right on the coast, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure how many uh, there were. And some of have been have relocated because some of the schools were too damaged and so they were having to, to go elsewhere. Uh, you had a lot of things on your agenda from the moment you were there 15 days, was it? Well, the whole trip. The whole trip. The whole trip, days. including New Zealand. We were there for, uh, for a week and then in Samoa. But yeah, there was a... You did other was, things. It was a full schedule, especially when the container didn't get cleared as early as we hoped to. So we had to kind of crunch it all in in those those days, but we were able to get uh, pretty much everything done that we needed to. You filled their agenda with a lot of different things, uh, and you got a little play time, but yeah. talk about the things that you had them do that weren't necessarily uh, uh, part of the relief effort. Well, we, um, we went to a, a high school where I went to school, um, and we were fortunate enough to be able to do an assembly there, and uh, we talked to the kids, and, and uh, we kind of, uh, we were greeted with song and dance, and it was I think just we've a got fun some, I think we've got some video that experience. we're going to show you here. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is one of the more, uh, more popular moments with the male section. Absolutely, of the <laughs> absolutely. Chelsea, what, or, uh, 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 yeah, Chelsea, what was going on with that? We were handing out volleyballs uh, for anyone that could answer certain questions that Coach Otoa had for them, and they just got so excited. These volleyballs, were, they had our logo on them, and we'd signed them, and... We handed them out to anyone that got the right answer, and hands were flying everywhere. Everyone wanted to answer these questions because they wanted just that interaction, I guess you could say, with us. Yeah, I guess you could call it interaction. <laughs> yeah. It was particularly important for them. And uh, Sam, what are, you're being presented something here. What is that? It is uh, significant to one that uh, is a talking chief um, that they use to be able to, um, uh, to represent uh, the village or others, and so it was quite significant with that, uh, it was called a to'o to and a fue that the, the high chiefs use as they present themselves to the village, and so it was quite a huge honor for them to be able to present that to me. Very good. Chelsea, thanks for joining us in this segment. Thank you. And congratulations, and I look forward to another great year from UVU. We're gonna be right back with another uh, UVU volleyball star on Utah Matters in just a moment. Welcome back to Utah Matters. We're with the Utah Valley University uh, volleyball team and who are also relief workers in disguise. They spent uh, parts of their, uh, right after this last winter semester, helping the folks who were uh, uh, hit hard by the tsunami in, uh, in Samoa. We're with uh, another player now, Danny Robison. She's from Orem. She's an Orem Tiger formerly, mm -hmm. now a lady Wolverine or just a Wolverine, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you got a chance, uh, Danny, to meet uh, the head of state in Samoa. Yes, we did. Uh, tell us about that. Um, that was a very special day. It's not every day that someone gets to go meet the head of state in a different foreign country even. And uh, we got to go up to his house and he invited us into his home and we all sat in the gathering room, I guess. And 
got to kind of pick a brain his part a little bit and hear a little bit about his life. That's us presenting him with some gifts. Now, now he has some pretty strong Utah connections, doesn't he? Is that right? Uh, he does. Well, just a, a few months ago, he was actually, uh, he, he met with President Uchtdorf um, of, uh, uh, of the church. The and LDS so, church. LDS right? church. Okay. And so, and uh, with personal invitation, well, he, he has a lot of family here too, uh, with several of us that are here in Utah. And, and so he's actually coming on a trip in, in August to, to meet with the church. And we, hopefully that uh, we can try to, work something out that he might be able to, we can, can meet again. Yeah. Danny, we have some video also of the hospital that you visited. Now, this was mm -hmm. a, uh, the Catholic hospital. Is that, have I got that right? Or no, excuse me. Um, this was the National Hospital. Th this was actually, this hospital here is actually the, the hospital that received, this was one of the smaller hospitals on the south side of the island. And then this area was the area that was hit hardest by the tsunami. And this head nurse here, as she was telling us about things, uh, um, it was just uh, real sad because that small hospital kind of took the brunt of all the injured and uh, those that died in the tsunami as they were trying to get relief. Yeah. And you, we saw a truck pull up to a playground and throw some volleyballs over. What was that, yeah. Danny? We called that our Santa Claus Day. We drove around in the vans and... Anytime we saw someone out playing rugby or volleyball, we'd go throw a ball out to them. We had t-shirts that we would throw out to people we saw on the side of the roads. And it was awesome just to see how grateful they were for seeing these crazy Americans throwing stuff out the window. They tre <laughs> seriously treasured. They we'd see them down the road putting on their shirts and so happy with a big smile on their face. What, would, what did you feel the condition of the people was there? Could you feel that there was some, some uh, destitution there? Um, uh, uh, like Elise Our said, spirits. the Samoan people are very loving people, very grateful. Uh, while we were down closer to where the tsunami hit, when people were talking about it, you could you know, feel the loss that they had and everything they lost, but they were still just so happy and so grateful that we'd even take the time to come over and see them and be so willing to give them all this stuff. It really brightened up their days and you could totally feel the uplifting in their spirits. Now, you, did you get to play in I mean, you're on beaches. Uh, yes, we did get to go to a few beaches. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. Well, um, the beaches there are amazing. We had the hookups here with Sam and got to go to a, a nice resort. And over in the resorts, just everyone's happy. You're on a beach, but the water is warm. There's so many starfish that we got to see. And just really bonding together as a team was yeah. an awesome experience. I understand they fed you well. Oh, yes. Plenty of food. A lot of good food. Different? Uh, there were a lot of different food, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's taro root like? I'm not the one to be asking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, your coach is probably familiar with mm -hmm. it, so, yeah. Yeah, it, well, obviously it's something that the taro that I grew up with, and uh, we try to get Danny to taste it, but... Uh, <laughs> she was too involved with the roast pig. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Trying to figure out just why there was a whole pig on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once you get past the snout and the eyes, you're okay, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot just, of people really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now, you, uh, it, was, it was hot there, Umid. You played oh, some yes. volleyball. Uh, you did some exhibition matches. Mm -hmm. We got to play one match in Samoa, and here's the footage. It was the most tiring, sweatiest game I've ever played in because there was no air conditioning. I don't even think there were fans in this gym, but it was definitely one of my most memorable games, just being able to go and play and have... There were so many people there watching. It was just fun to There's Danny be right the there. entertainment. Yes, that is me. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to, to be able to go play. Um, I mean, that's the whole reason why we went, is for us to be able to go and compete. But we were very fortunate to be able to, to do other things um, besides playing that uh, made it more of a memorable experience for other girls. You had, a, you had a chance to talk quickly. We've got about 30 seconds. But you had a chance to, to talk, uh, to speak at some forums. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. We put on a youth fireside and got to talk about just a lot of things that mean a lot to us. Gratitude, honesty, yeah. real principles that have actually been strong in our team, not only our lives, but our team as well. And your team seems to be bonded uh, by that. This Everyone's a, on the same page in that yeah, regard. This was a big bonding trip, and I'm excited to see what comes out of this next season. Yeah, that's great. 
Well, we're with uh, the, U Univer the Utah Valley University volley women's volleyball team and their coach, Sam Mateau. We'll be right back with some closing thoughts. Welcome back to Utah Matters. We are with the Utah Valley University women's volleyball team program, and, and I've invited now uh, with us, we have Nate Mathis and Megan Robinson. They are with the athletic department. Nate's the assistant athletic director, and Megan is over marketing for the athletic department. Well, this was a big trip uh, for you all, and I imagine took quite a bit of uh, coordinating and, and effort to get, th get this done. How important is something like this for a university athletic program, especially UVU, where you've just attained university status? Um, what did it mean to the university? Uh, well, athletics in general are typically one of the more visible parts of a university, and so uh, to have the opportunity to go to another country where they, first of all, don't know that much about um, the United States or uh, who we are as Utah Valley University, um, just to teach them about uh, the school and what we do as far as an athletic department, it was a really big deal and really important as far as you know, growing our athletes and then our image and, and things like that as well. Yeah. Now, you've got a great new president there, Matt Holland. Uh, was he supportive of this? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, President Holland's been very supportive of athletics and um, everything that we're trying to do in athletics. Um, he's, he sees the vision of what athletics does and is for a university. I mean, we're the, we're the front porch for a university, and we, we're the ones, like Megan said, that are out in front. We're the ones that travel on the road. We're the ones that are on national television and uh, trying to um, create a brand and, and push our brand and, and uh, show everyone else who we are and, and what we do. So, understanding you might be a little biased about this question, but how important are athletics in general? You, you all walk a line because you're out front, but uh, when you're out front, uh, you can occasionally get a flat tire. And uh, uh, I imagine that you're very cognizant of the Act, the behavior and activity of your players off the court, even on the court. Uh, Megan, how do, you, uh, how do you make sure that that's covered? Um, well, a lot of it comes from the coaches and from the athletic department in general. I think we have a great program uh, and a lot of really great athletes that have um, high values on and off the court and really work hard to, to do great things both on and off the court as well. And so um, when we can show them doing great things on the court or on the playing field, um, and then show that they're, you know, just as good as, of people, you know, in their daily life. I think it, re it really makes a big difference and helps to build our image um, as a university as we're, you know, still growing um, and building fans. I think everything helps. Nate, is there some understanding within the coaching staff of all the programs at UVU that uh, you're going to go after the type of individuals that we see on this volleyball team? I mean, this is. I mean, this is, looks like a great team with yeah. a great bond, and they all uh, seem to have high standards. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this was a special group. We talk about it all the time. Um, to put a group of girls like this together was, was, it took a lot of effort. And I know that Sam looks for the type of a makeup in, in a player that uh, fits what he wants. And, and it, not only a great athlete on the court, but, but a great person off the court. And, I feel like our, all of our coaches at UVU have that philosophy to bring in student athletes that are going to make a difference both on the field of play and, and off. So, What's been the reaction on this trip? What's the afterlife here for the, the tsunami? We can't effort? stop talking about it. Um, you know, it's, it, we, we've, since we've been home, we've, we've talked about it with hundreds of people. And, and it's, it seems like it's, it's the only thing that, that we want to talk about and, kind of and reflect here. on. And, and it's been, it was a life-changing experience for me um, to see these people, to see how happy they are with not a lot. And, and it really made me think about who I am and, and what I have. And, and um, it was a very humbling experience. Very good. So, I'm sure it impacted a lot of people, clearly impacted a lot of people. Yeah, I think, I mean, it impacted several people in, in Samoa, but I think we all came back feeling like we were impacted the most, so. Yeah. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Utah Valley University and their great volleyball team, Coach Sam Matoa, 
uh, Nate, Megan, and the gals, uh, thanks for coming on and talking about, uh, about this great trip uh, to Samoa and New Zealand and the help that you offered up uh, to those folks who were devastated by this, uh, this disaster. Thank you so much for joining us on Utah Matters. We will see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>